Welcome back, everybody. Thank you all so much for joining me here today. My name is Pratesh with Kaizen Crypto. In this video, I wanted to talk with you about some of the things we're seeing recently with the Cardano network during these NFT drops. Uh, it's pretty crazy to see that the network capacity is getting up to a point where the network is under a full load. So it's uh, pretty cool to think that we are you know, undergoing that much activity, but uh, what are some of the possible solutions to this as we're going to start seeing things like DeFi and a lot of these Ethereum projects moving over to Cardano. So I wanted to talk with you about that here in this video. I've got an article for you. Also, we're gonna be taking a look at a partnership that was just announced today by IOHK, saying that they are working together now with Bondly Finance to create a bridge to bring NFTs from Ethereum to Cardano. So a big, use case and a big opportunity for projects that do want to move over to Cardano for the obvious benefits. We're going to get into that in this video. And I also wanted to talk with you about Catalyst. So voting for Fund6 has ended today. I wanted to go over some of the dates for what's to come next with this Catalyst funding round. So we're going to take a look at that. I've also got an article going full circle into what we're going to be talking about in this video. Some of the broader, more mainstream news outlets are coming out and saying, which is a better buy, Ethereum or Cardano? So this is certainly a topic that we're seeing not only discussed within the tighter crypto community, but we're also seeing this in the broader ecosystem with people who are looking at cryptocurrency through a wider lens. So we're going to go through some of those points and kind of put uh, everything we talk about here in full circle. And then lastly, to close things up for this video today, if you are a CNFT fan, you definitely don't want to miss the CNFT con hosted by BuffyBot. So this is going to be something really exciting that uh, it's going to allow everybody in the CNFT community to come together and talk about their projects. So I'm looking forward to this. It's going to start tomorrow. We're going to take a look at some of those exciting updates coming up with this event. All that coming up right after a quick shout out to our sponsor. A big shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Diamond Stake Pool. Diamond Stake Pool has been minting blocks since February of 2021. They were one of the early supporters of our Kaizen Stake Pools. So as a way to be able to return the favor, just wanted to say a big thank you to them and a huge shout out. They have just crossed over 400 minted blocks on the Cardano blockchain. They are bringing in those rewards for their delegators. So thank you again so much to Diamond Stake Pool. Keep up the great work. Be sure to support them, ticker C-A-R-A-T. A big thank you to Diamond Stake Pool for sponsoring today's video. And to start things off, what I wanted to take a look at was what we've seen recently. This actually happened today, but it's definitely happened other times in the past where we see the network load for Cardano during these NFT drops being completely maxed out. We see here in this image, we've got the five minute network load at 97%. So pretty much topping out there in the red. And um, just wanted to read a little bit of this uh, conversation that we had on Twitter. Uh, Patrick, so he is the CEO of NFT Maker. He said, uh, sorry. And then I uh, just kind of rebuttaled back and said, NFT Maker servers are on fire. Um, so he's saying literally four to five projects that launched in the last four hours. So this has been going on now for quite a while. And I think that there's going to be continued interest, if not an increased interest as time goes on. So things like this, I feel like we're going to start to see a bit more frequently. And I think at this point, it becomes a matter of how can we address some of these issues. So I've got an article that I wanted to share with you all here today. But before we take a look at that, just uh, sharing with you this tweet here from IOHK. This is an announcement saying that they have partnered with Bondly Finance to create a bridge to bring NFTs from Ethereum to Cardano. So in my mind, what I'm thinking about is, well, if we consider how much interest is currently taking place with projects who are building from the start on Cardano, and if you couple that with projects who are gonna be moving over from Ethereum to the Cardano blockchain, there's gonna be a lot of activity happening within the NFT space on Cardano. So things like what we saw with the network load being at this point right here, you know, at 97%, um, one thing that I wanted to point out is that, in fact, the network is doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. We don't see any failed transactions necessarily. We don't see the network crashing or anything like that. It's What's happening is these transactions are being backlogged in a mempool, right? And the blocks on the chain have to go through and fit these transactions in the block uh, for you know whatever size that they're trying to fill in that block. Um, so it does depend on 
you know, what is contained within the transaction as well. A lot of these are just sending ADA, but then if you think about the tokens that might be wrapped within these transactions or the metadata that might be associated with it as well. So there's a lot of considerations in terms of how we're able to fix some of these problems that we're currently experiencing. So this is definitely growing pains for Cardano and IOHK posted this really interesting blog post. Um, so I will be sure to leave a link for you all. This was actually posted today. Um, and the title of it is Cardano Robust, Resilient and Flexible. So what they've done with this protocol is they've built it so that we can prioritize certain things. I guess in this case, what we're talking about is going to be how we can scale the blockchain. So I wanted to just briefly read some of these key points in this article. Uh, I think it's definitely a very interesting topic to discuss as we're currently seeing some of these things happening with Cardano. Uh, there was actually a comment on that previous tweet saying, why is this always happening every time there is a mint happening for these NFT projects on Cardano? So let's go ahead and dig into that here a little bit. Ouroboros is designed to handle a large volume of data as well as transactions and scripts of different complexity and size. At present, and with current parameters, the Cardano network is utilizing an average of only about 25% of its capacity. So this isn't considering when we do have these NFT drops. Of course, the most efficient scenario is that Cardano runs at or near 100% of its capacity where the network is saturated. So that's pretty similar to what we're experiencing right now. While many networking solutions would suffer under such conditions, both Ouroboros and the Cardano network stack have been designed to be fair and highly resilient even under heavy saturation. Benchmarking analysis shows that under 200% saturation, the overall performance is still resilient and there are no network failures. So the comment that was made was that uh, Solana has been you know, able to mint these NFTs without any issues. But the one thing that I would say to that is that the Solana network did actually have that point in time where there was that network failure, right? The network had crashed for that certain period in time. And if we think about what's going on with Ethereum, you know, it's so expensive just to transact on the blockchain. Minting an NFT can cost you hundreds of dollars. So all these networks are experiencing these growing pains, so to speak, right now. So let's continue reading and seeing what this says. Even while stress testing under 44 times, the total available network capacity also shows no failures. The network is so designed to work this way using back pressure to manage the overall system load. So while some individual users taking part in a large NFT drop may experience longer wait times for their transactions, for example, or may need to resubmit the occasional transaction from a large batch, this does not mean that the network is struggling. It actually means the network is performing as intended, and we call this a graceful degradation. So they give a link to read more about this term in this article. I'm just going to scroll through a little bit here just to kind of give you the big picture, kind of the meat and potatoes of this article. So they present some possible solutions to being able to address this network load that we're seeing during these large NFT drops, as well as what we'll probably see once DeFi is rolled out on the Cardano blockchain, as well as the flexibility offered by parameter adjustments, which can be made within an epoch if required. Of course, we can vote on these different parameters. In the medium or longer term, further options will come into play. So one of these possible solutions is Hydra which would allow for multiple operations to be run in parallel, which grants enhanced scalability. It's a state channel solution, increasing the system throughput and also reducing the demand for on-chain execution. However, while Hydra helps with multiple scalability use cases, it doesn't specifically address NFT creation efficiency. As Cardano continues to mature and grow, we will continue to look at how we optimize the network and manage the network capacity. So there's a really interesting point mentioned there with Hydra. And then another example is that they can also increase the block size um, and, you know, allow for greater transactions to be fit into a single block on Cardano. Uh, another possible solution that comes to my mind is things like side chains. There is a company called DC Spark who's building something like this. So there's a few different options that we have here with Cardano and being able to scale to meet the demands of the network loads during these times of intense demands. Um, but uh, I think it is growing pains right now. And what we've seen so far is that Cardano is definitely being stress tested with these events. And uh, still, we have no downtime within the Cardano network. Cardano just keeps chugging along. So those were some thoughts related to what we've seen with the Cardano NFT drops. There's a bit of congestion happening on the network sometimes. Um, there's a 
you know, there's a whole bunch of growing pains involved with that. But uh, I think that we have certainly been built on firm foundations in terms of the Cardano technology stack. So these are just possible solutions moving forward to help us scale to millions and billions of users. Next up, I wanted to talk about Project Catalyst. So Catalyst voting has ended today for Fund 6. It's pretty incredible to think about how quickly these funding rounds are going by. So this is on the Reddit where it kind of gives us a down and dirty of what exactly to look out for with voting on these proposals. The timeline that it gives us for Fund 6 is that we should expect the voting results around about October 28th. So maybe within a week or so from today. Uh, and then as far as when you'll receive your rewards, it's going to be about the beginning of November. One thing to keep in mind with rewards is that your rewards are paid along with your staking rewards. So you're not actually gonna receive a separate transaction if you do vote and you earn your rewards. It's gonna be paid at the end of the epoch along with your staking rewards. So just something to keep in mind if you're looking out for your voting rewards. Just wanted to say a big thank you to everybody who did support our Project Catalyst proposal, the Catalyst video series with Kaizen. Uh, there was uh, quite a bit of work that's gone into these videos. I actually have already completed three of the 10 videos that I had submitted in the proposal. So I asked for $15,000, you know, just to help me fund some of the equipment, you know, buy a new camera, all that kind of good stuff. I've already got the mic covered, so we're good there. Um, also could definitely use some help with editing some of these videos. You know, it takes a lot of time to go through all these. So pretty much just some maintenance costs there with running the YouTube channel. But I know that there are a lot of really great proposals that I was able to support. So I'm hoping for the best for everybody who did participate in Fund 6. Wish you all the best of luck. Taking a look real quick at what we had talked about at the beginning of the video with what we've seen with the NFTs and the DeFi and everything happening now on these blockchains that have smart contracts, Ethereum and Cardano have been compared for a really long time. I think even before smart contracts had came up on Cardano, there was this idea and narrative of Cardano being this Ethereum killer. Um, so this article is written by Motley Fool and Motley Fool is a um, mainstream, kind of a bigger name investment advisory company. Uh, and they talk a lot about some of these investments and it's interesting to hear their take on cryptocurrencies now. So what they did in this article was they outlined a bit of pros and cons for each respective blockchain. They've got some for Ethereum, they've got some for Cardano, and just to give you a high level. So they said that Ethereum is currently running proof of work. It's extremely expensive to operate on the blockchain because of the high gas fees. Um, it does give a few benefits in that it is decentralized and running dApps on the network. And then they talk about Cardano as well. They kind of go over some pros and cons here as well. Namely, they talked about how Cardano is already using a proof of stake mining algorithm. The network is much more environmentally friendly. It's much cheaper to transact on the blockchain. So some well-known benefits of Cardano, but then it also talks about how the ecosystem is a bit less evolved. You know, currently there isn't things like DeFi. We don't have the Uniswap of Cardano just yet. We're waiting on things like the Plutus application backend. We're waiting on a lot of these audits to take place for some of these projects. So there is still a bit of work to be done there with a lot of the technology that's being built on Cardano in terms of these projects that are building on top of it. But I think from an underlying infrastructure standpoint, I had this analogy in my head the other day. I like to think about these platforms as kind of like the plumbing to your house. Right, you've got things that are built on top of the foundation, right? And then you've got your plumbing, which is kind of like your wiring, you've got your electrical, all that kind of good stuff. A lot of that stuff is gonna be taking place under the hood. You don't really pay attention to it, but you just know that it works. And I think that's what Cardano has going for it mostly is that we've seen it being stress tested. We see that there's a lot of things that are happening in terms of what is being built um, and it's just a matter of being able to facilitate all the activity that's soon to be happening on the blockchain. Um, but to think about that analogy, again, going back to that with the plumbing, I think that the plumbing for Cardano we're going to see doesn't get backed up very frequently. Uh, once we do start to see the scalability aspects being implemented for Cardano, um, there's definitely going to be some obvious advantages there once we can actually get to that point. So in terms of what's best for you to invest in, you guys definitely want to make sure you do your own research there. You guys know we talk a lot about Cardano here on this channel. We are pretty much a Cardano-centric channel. So if you 
like Cardano content, be sure to subscribe. This is definitely a place where you can go to stay up to date with everything happening with this community. And speaking of which, the CNFT Con powered by BuffyBot is gonna be taking place this weekend, October 22nd through October 24th. You can find out more details on their website at cnfticon.io. And what's gonna happen here is just gonna be a culmination of a bunch of different people within the ecosystem talking about their projects, sharing their ideas. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So I'm looking forward to this. Uh, we're gonna see some incredible people like Alyssa and Trevor from the Never Engine, BuffyBot, uh, with spaces, uh, Nikhil Yas, so cool stuff. I will be there. Uh, I'll be one of the uh, moderators as well. I'll be doing some of the interviews. So I'm looking forward to it. Starts October 22nd. Be sure to uh, check out the website because it gives you a breakdown of when these times are taking place. This is in UTC time, and you can see the full schedule with some of the projects that are going to be presenting during this CNFT con. So looking forward to it. There's a lot of stuff happening within the ecosystem and uh, CNFTs are something I'm really excited about. So it's gonna be great to share with you some of those thoughts uh, during this event. And I hope that you all will be able to make it as well. All right, everyone. Well, thanks so much for tuning into this video. It was a bit of an update talking about some of the things we've seen recently within the Cardano community and within the CNFT space. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you guys did, please be sure to drop a like for me. Don't forget to hit that subscribe as well so you can stay up to date when I post new videos and leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you are looking forward to with this Cardano ecosystem. All right, everyone. Well, thank you all so much for watching and until the next video, take care.